So I've got here this motorized curtain track system. And I've got a window with curtains. Let's get it installed. I believe this is made by Zemismart. It says here a few of the features. Manual operation. Manual operation without power. Uh, electrical position. Intermediate position. Dry contact control. And automatical position. Got a whole variety of sizes from 2.2 meters to 8.2 meters. Woo! DIY, silent, smooth running, radio control, manual operation, large load, assembled fast, and high technology. Cool. Ooh, Tuya controlled. That's great news. That means with the Tuya component in Home Assistant, we should be able to get this working with Home Assistant pretty easily. That's great news. Yeesh. This looks complicated. AC. Motor. This is probably RF. 433 megahertz kind of control. Open, close, plus, minus, something, something. Another remote. Jeez. Maybe this is this is must not be a remote. This must be something else. So there's another remote. Lots of hardware. Yeesh. That must be the key to making it move right here. This is a kind of a belt with teeth. I got some work to do. It's taken quite a bit of work to decipher what the instructions are trying to tell me. But I think I understand the first few parts at least. The track system comes with one big solid piece and then another piece that is made up of smaller pieces. And these smaller pieces are slightly different sizes. There's one that's real short, this one's a little longer. This one looks like it's the same size as that one. And these can all be taken apart uh, with this Allen wrench. And what you have to do is measure the window where you want to put this and then take out parts here to get it to match as close as possible to the size that you need for your window. Something to think about is how you want to mount this. This is the bracket that's going to mount the rack like that. This is upside down, but that's how it'll look. You have the option of mounting this to the uh, underside of the top cross bar of the windowsill, and then putting this inside the windowsill, or You've got these brackets here so that you can have this curtain rod outside the windowsill, in which case this will go on here and then you'll clip this in here. So this will mount to the wall and this will mount to this piece. For my window, I'm going to use these because I've also got blinds on my window so I don't have any space under that windowsill to put this directly up there. But that would be a, a nice way to hide most of this mechanism because it would it would be kind of uh, out of the way. But you can't have anything else in that windowsill probably. So I want mine to be somewhere around 66 inches long. This piece is 39 and a half. This piece is 20. So say that's 40, 60, and then another about seven here. So I think for my window, I'm gonna take these two pieces off and I'll have this piece, this piece, and that piece together. And that should give me the length I want.
This is pretty nice aluminum channel here. I don't know what that groove does, but sure seems like the right thing to do to have them lined up like that. Okay, I wanna make sure this is does not have a gap. We want no gaps. Sixty-seven. There are two options for what kind of system you get here. There's the double-sided opening track system where you'd have the curtains opening in two directions, closing in the middle, opening in two directions. So that's the double-sided opening track system. Or then there's the single opening track system where you'd have the curtain at one end, starting at one end when it's closed, and sliding all the way to the other end for open. So that'd be the single side open track. So I have the double side. The next step is to cut the belt. Now because I have the double side track system, because I have the two openings, right, I need two lengths of belt. They give you some measuring tools here to decide how long your belt needs to be. So this little guy slides over these teeth. This little guy slides in there, grabs those teeth. Now we clip this onto one end of the track. At the other end, once you've put the belt all the way through your track, they've got this measuring tool and it slides onto the end of the track like that and then you measure out here to where where that ends and that's where you cut your belt so right out there and that's where I'm going to cut the belt if you have the double direction track system you need to make two equal lengths of belt in the same way so I've got one now I need to make the second one if you're doing a single track it says the total length of the belt for the double track plus two teeth. I don't know if that means this plus two teeth or if that means two lengths of this plus two teeth. All right, let's cut another piece of belt. All right, put the clip on there. Clip it to the track. Measuring tool on the end of the track. Stretch the belt out. Cut it at the end of the measuring tool. I think that's it. Next, the first thing is to put a couple of these belt buckles onto the belt. So it's a little tab here. It's got ridges where the belt teeth fit in. And there's a second part that locks that in. There's two little tabs there. And then it slides under back there. There you go. That's a belt buckle. Now, because I have two belts, I want one at one end, like that. And then I want the other belt buckle at the other end. So now I have two oppositely assembled belt buckles. Next, we need to take apart the carrier wheel here. So you need a Phillips screwdriver. So we need this piece first. So this is the carrier wheel. This end, slide it into this slot. It looks like they're equal. They do the same thing. This other piece, so we end up like that. That's what it looks like to me. Now we're gonna slide one of them in from one end and the other one in on the other, one belt across the track. Now the track, track has two channels. What you have to do is thread the belt down one of the channels, one side like that. Okay, so I'm gonna do that on my full length channel here, threading it into the side channel there, all the way out the other end. And it will stick out 
based on our measuring tool, about 11 centimeters on the other end. To get this part in to the track, you do have to kind of pull it away from the wheel a little bit, and then it will slide into the track. If this is too tight in there, it won't go in. So just push that out, pull this a little, and now it'll slide in. And then we do the same thing on the opposite side. Here's my 11 centimeters. This piece down that track. And again, when you get to the end, it probably won't fit very well until you pull that away a little. So once you've pulled this, pulled those two apart a little, then it'll slide in. Okay, next. Now we're going to put on what they're calling the subsidiary, which is going to be the piece that connects to the motor. They both look the same, even though for mine I only have one motor. So it doesn't matter which one you use. Take the belt as it comes out of here and you slide it in to the slot in there. And it will go into and around and come back out. When it's back out, you get another one of their belt buckles, these two piece dealy whoppers, and we're gonna put that on here. And I don't believe it matters which way. Now you need to take apart the other wheel assembly here. And then with the wheel facing towards the subsidiary, we're gonna slide that part in there again. And then you slide the wheel in the track, and then the whole thing back in there. I'm guessing this part can loosen. Slide that all the way in and then you can tighten this back down. Alright, that's one side. Let's do the other side. Okay, belt comes out. Subsidiary. Put the belt in one side. Pull it out the other side. This looks like it's our last belt buckle. Wheel facing the subsidiary. Slide that in. Again, this goes in that track. Done. Next. Now it looks like we're going to put these back together. So this part goes between the two. Then you've got this back piece. Snaps in. And that part goes on this side. So we want one of these on one side. The other one is going to go on the other side. And then check to make sure it slides pretty smoothly, and it seems to. Wee, 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 wee. Okay, that's enough. Now we put the rest of these little hook track wheelie boppers in on each side. It says eight per meter. It actually looks like there's nine on one side. Well, nine in one bag. I've actually got three bags of these. I guess the more I put in, the more bunched up it'll be. Looks like I was a little premature putting this in and tightening it. We need this out so that we can get the wheels in. So there's no side to these. They just go in and down. Okay, this is kind of fun, gotta admit. I guess I should look at how many hooks I have on my curtains. And then once you have those in, you can put this lock back on. And same down here. Okay. The last thing to do here is to hang these hooks on the ends of the track. So the track, uh, what did they call these? Subsidiaries has this little slot and you can hang that in there, and I'm guessing we can hang a curtain bit from there. It looks like you also have the option of using these bigger ones if you wanted uh, you know, a little different style or something. Now it's ready to install in the window. Oh boy. Time to take down the old curtain so I can put it back up.
So I'm going to be mounting mine with these brackets on the outside of the window. So step one is to measure how far apart I want these to be at the very ends. To do that, I'm measuring from this point to this point on the other end. And I'll cheat and tell you it's 65 inches. 65. Now I put one of these clips on the bottom of each of those brackets. They come with these little nuts and bolts. Would be nice if they threw in a little screwdriver and one of those little throwaway wrenches for these, like Ikea does. In hindsight, if you know you're gonna use these, put them on the brackets before you hang the brackets. So after fiddling around and trying a few different things, what I settled on for the best way to align these so that you get maximum closure of the curtains is like this. So one of them comes out, the other one is on the top surface on this side, but goes to the back. And then what that does is it gives you a nice overlap of the curtains so you get maximum light elimination. They're not actually closed all the way right now. There. So now they're closed all the way and you've got quite a bit of overlap. So it blocks out quite a bit more light. That's the right way to do it for this arrangement that I've got. That's not going to be long enough. Pretty easy to figure out how this clips into that. This needs to be about six feet longer. Better get an extension cord. It doesn't mention this anywhere in the instructions, but after failing to get this to attach to Wi-Fi, I'm wondering if maybe this is a Wi-Fi adapter. So I'm gonna put it here. See if that improves my ability to attach to this thing. Yeah, that's it. Now it's flashing rapidly. Okay. So that's what you got to do to be able to get it to connect to the app. Well, once you finally get the Wi Fi adapter connected to the motor, you can turn on the Tuya app for iPhone or Android and connect to your device. If you haven't already, you'll need to set up a Tuya account. Then click the little plus in the upper right hand corner to add a new device. The device type is curtain. Shouldn't be a surprise. You need to put in your Wi-Fi SSID and password, and then it'll try to connect to the device. If you got the Wi-Fi adapter in and you got the little red light blinking real fast, it should connect pretty easily in a few seconds. When it's connected, you can give it a name and select the room it's in. And then you'll be greeted with the controls for the curtain. Turn on opens them. Turn off closes them. Stop stops them. And you can also select somewhere in between all the way open and all the way closed. And it will open or close to a certain percentage, say 50% or 82%. That's pretty nice. Now, if you're using a home assistant, which you should be, and if you're not, there's a component for Tuya. You need an entry like this in your configuration.yaml file. Country code one is for the US. To find your country code, 
you can go to the Tuya component page in the Home Assistant documentation and click this link right here. That takes you to this lovely website with a whole bunch of country codes. That's a lot of codes. With the Tuya component installed in your configuration.yaml file, save and restart Home Assistant. And when it comes back up, go to the States page. And where it says Filter Entities, just type Cover dot. And most likely, the Tuya cover will be some jumbled bunch of numbers like this. But when you click on it, it will have the name that you gave your curtain opener when you set up the app. And now from here, we can open and close the curtains. I've noticed that most of the time it just says unknown. I'm guessing it doesn't report its state back to Home Assistant very often, but the controls seem to work. So that's good enough for now. I haven't tried changing the firmware on this device, and I'm not sure I'm going to. I'll leave that to somebody smarter than me to try and figure out. Now, if you don't want to use Home Assistant or the Tuya app, you can still control your curtains with the remote controls that come with the kit. I wasn't able to test this square one because it requires a funky size battery that I didn't have. But it looks like it will control each side of the curtains independently. That's cool. This other remote control just takes a couple of AA batteries and I didn't have to do any pairing. Just put the batteries in, push the buttons, and it worked great. Here's the demo. Here they are, motorized automated curtains. Initially, I was pretty intimidated by the instructions and all the little pieces. It took me probably three hours to put the whole thing together. Most of that was time I spent staring at the instructions and scratching my head. Now that I've done it once, I could probably put it together again in less than an hour. There were a few things that the instructions missed, but I covered them in this video. These work pretty well. They do what they say they're gonna do, they are super quiet. I'm going to need something to hide the mechanical parts. I'm going to lose some serious WAF points. But overall, pretty good. I like them. That's all. Thanks. Adios.